Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. We are back again today with little adorable Spock. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be showing him, oh, I'm throwing him on the mic. We're gonna be showing him the physical cue to get him to perform 10 different behaviors. Now I'm not gonna go into too much detail onto every single one. I do have a video for each behavior that we're going to be teaching him that you could check out for more detailed information. But I'm gonna show you how we're going to be doing it with Spock by using a technique known as luring. So we're gonna start with the sit. Keep in mind, wherever your dog's nose goes, the butt does the opposite. We want him to be able to do all the behaviors on the luring alone. But some of them we may need to help with other techniques. If that is the case, make sure whatever you're using to help your pup understand the concept of luring, that comes after you start the luring because it has to become a predictable pattern. So let's get Spock over here. Spock, come here, buddy. Come on, come on over here, over here, over here. He's chewing on something. <laughs> Let me get him. So we're gonna do the sit first. Wherever nose goes, butt does the opposite. So we take our hand, we lift up. Yes, once our pup's rear end hits the ground, that's when we mark. So he's chewing his food. Come on, big guy. Lift. Yes. And reward. During this step, since we're not saying the command, notice I'm not telling him to sit, we could also use our terminal marker. So we can lift, free, and reward. Lift, free, and reward. So again, remember for him, free means he's going to get a reward and he's released. Yes means he's going to get a reward. Again, during this step, we can use either marker. It's completely up to you. So lift, yes, reward. Now for the down, <clears throat> a common mistake people make with the down is they'll bring their hand down and as the dog tries to go for it, they'll move their hand away. What you wanna do is you wanna go straight down and you also wanna create a cave with your hand. What I mean by that, when I'm going down, I'm doing this. You can kinda of see it creates a cave that our dog has to place their muzzle into. And when they go down and they place their muzzle into that cave, it naturally brings their rear end down. So again, we cup the food and we go straight down. Yes, once the elbows hit the ground, we mark and reward. We can use this as an opportunity as well to bring him back up into the sit. So again, we go down, yes, then we reward. We bring him back up once he finishes chewing, yes, into the sit. So I can do some puppy push-ups right here, yes, make him do it down and then bring him back up to the sit, yes. Very simple. The next one's going to be the stand. With the stand, I like to take my hand and I like to turn the cup or the bowl, like if I create a bowl, I turn the bowl away. So then the puppy or the dog has to come around to get their muzzle inside, which will naturally bring their back end up. It doesn't always work right away and he struggles a little bit with it. So I'm gonna help him out just by taking my hand underneath his belly, scooping up his back end. So I take the food, bring it underneath, and then I help him out. Yes, once he pops up that back end, I mark and reward. So again, we lift, yes. So I can do a sit there and then I bring this to his chest. Then I help, yes, and reward. Again, if you're gonna help out like I am right here, make sure whatever you're using for the lure comes first. So if I have him in front of me, I'm doing the lure first, which he doesn't fully know yet, then I'm helping, yes. So again, it becomes a predictable pattern. He likes to pop his rear end up and shift a little bit to the side. If that continues, then I could use something like a shaping box or I could use a wall to prevent him from practicing that. But for the uh, demonstration purposes, it's okay. Again, tuck to his chest, help him out, yes, reward. So that's going to be the start of our stand command. Next one's going to be heel. If you're working on precision style obedience and you're gonna do a competition heel, you're gonna do a lot more than what I'm showing right now. All we want for this is to show him how to find the heel position. The heel position is just going to be on the left side of my body. So what I wanna do for that is I'm gonna step back with my left leg. I'm gonna use my left hand to guide him into heel position. Once he's in the position, mark and reward. So I step back, there he goes, swing him back and then mark and reward. This is an excellent exercise to do if you wanna do loose leash walking. I like to get the dog or puppy I'm working with, come on buddy, used to going around into heel position, getting the reward, boop. And then I jump back and I get him to go back into heel position. Excellent, very nice. I'll go back again. Notice how his head goes out this way and around and in. That's the way I like to get them to find the heel position. The reason for that, if you take your dog, come on buddy, 
and you have him go like this into heel position, then you're not gonna get that pretty flip finish that you want if you're doing any sort of advanced obedience. But even with a pet dog, having a flip finish is very nice. So that's when they're in the sit front position directly in front of you and you guide them around. Come on, come on, you can do it. There we go, and he's got it. And they come back into that heel position. But when they fully understand it, then they'll just swing their butt around to each spot. So I'm kind of helping him out, but you get the idea. That's going to be the heel. The next one is the come when called. So with come, all I do is a little bow. I drop my body and I do a little bow. That little bow brings the dog or the puppy directly in front of me. Once they get close, I lift up, which gets them to sit. This is also known as a backwards follow exercise. What's good about this is I could walk backwards and just hand them treats the whole time. So I'm gonna swing back around this way. And then anytime I wanna stop, all I have to do is lift my hand up. And this is one of the first steps to teaching a come when called. Again, we wanna mark when our puppy is doing it correctly. As I'm walking backwards, I could mark when he's coming towards me. There's different times when we can mark. So I could do this and go, yes, and give him a treat. I could stop and lift, yes, give him a reward. I could even walk backwards. He's eating the food, come on. And just reward him, because he's getting the primary the exact moment he's doing it right. This also comes in mind with uh, reward placement. Notice how I'm giving him the rewards very close to my body because I want him to be close to me. If you get in the habit of your dog sitting in front of you and you're reaching out to give him the reward, then that's going to be the position that your dog or your puppy is looking for in order to get those rewards. So we always want to reward them. Come here, you. Come on, I know those other dogs can be distracting. We want to reward them when they're in the position. That's not a good position, we'll try again. He's a little distracted from the neighbor's dogs barking. So that's gonna be our come when called. So we've done sit, down, stand, come, heel. Now we're gonna do the climb command. Again, climb is anything elevated. When we're teaching the climb command, it's a great opportunity to also teach the off command. So what we're gonna do is take the food, guide him up on top, yes, then reward. Take the food, guide him off, Showing them that we got it. Come on, buddy. Oh, oh there you go. Yes. <laughs> and we're going to guide him back up. Nice job, buddy. Good boy. This is a good confidence exercise for him. And back off one more time. Come on. Come on. Oh, you can do it. You can do it. Yay. And that's going to be the climb and the off command. Next one is the spin. All we're going to do is we're going to take the food and get our dog to spin in a circle. You can go either way. I like to only teach dogs to go counterclockwise. And the reason for that is when I have them in heel position. Oh, you can do it. I gotta remember not to give them so many pieces because it takes them a second to chew. All right, so when he's in heel position, I like to have him spin as a way to kind of break up heel a little bit and make it more fun for my dog. So again, I always get them to spin counterclockwise. Now you may find with a dog that doesn't have as much perseverance, they may give up halfway through. If that's the case, just start small, reward right there. And then as he gets better, reward a little farther. And as he gets better, you reward him the entire way. So depending on your dog's perseverance and motivation is gonna really dictate how difficult or how easy the spin is. So now we did the spin. Again, another very simple command. Next one is gonna be walking backwards. So I've never had him walk backwards yet, so this is going to be a first. When I have my hands open, that means come to me. When I close my hands, that means walk away, or not walk away, I'm sorry, walk backwards. So I'll show you how I do this. I bring the food to me, or the puppy, and then I close and I walk towards him. Yes, once he takes one step backwards, I mark and reward. I don't have to get him to take 20 steps back, just one in the beginning. So we close our fists, we walk towards him. Oh, he fell. If I need to help him, again, yes, good. So that took a little extra help. I had to use my left hand as well. Yes, good, so he's walking backwards now. Yes, very nice. Very good, buddy. Go ahead and get that piece. Yes, good. So you see, I'm just marking one, maybe two steps at a time. When he gets better at it, we can get him to walk back way farther 
with less rewards. So let's try again. Close the fist, walk towards them, yes. Very good, buddy. Yes, excellent, nicely done. I could also say free, good boy. Free, very nice. All right, another very simple one when done correctly. Now we're gonna do the center command. Center command is very fun, dogs usually love it. Keep that in mind if you're going to teach your dog the center command, they do usually like it and they will offer it up sometimes when you may not be expecting it. So if you have a larger dog breed, keep that in mind. You might be hanging out talking to your friends and then your dog comes and says hello right between your legs. So the way that I do that is I keep food in both hands. The food that's in my right hand, I do not give to the dog right away. I give them the food that's in the left hand when they get into the position. So I'm just using this hand to guide them. You'll see what I mean. So I guide him around, he's not getting that food. Then I switch him to my other hand. Now he gets the food and now I can walk and give him food from both hands. I can also have him sit by lifting up. So now you can see all these different skills that we've been able to, to develop with Spock here by using luring can create a very fun, very engaging training session. The very last one we're gonna do is the place bowl. So I'm gonna grab that real quick. You can keep filming little Spock running around. All right, so now we have the place bowl. The goal with this, he hasn't done this yet either, all I want him to do is place his paws on the bowl. Once he places his paws on the bowl, I'll mark and reward. So yes, he's so easy. All right, let's get another one. Yes, very nice. Very good. Now I can make it fun where I can go free and release him, let him come and get it. Excellent. And then let's go back. Free. Oh, just a good boy. At first, we don't need both paws. One is fine. Get him to do the other one. Free. Oh, good boy. We'll do one more, he's so easy. Now there's more that I like to do with this. This helps teach our dog a little bit of that rear end awareness. A lot of trainers also use this to help teach the flip finish. I also like to use this when I'm teaching my healing sticks, but this is a good starting platform just to get your puppy to place his paws on the front of the bowl. We can have him jump off, come on big guy, go back and put his paws on the bowl. You can do it, there you go, nice job. And then I like to just get them to pivot their back end, just like he's doing now. And again, this is the very first time Spock has done the bowl here. So again, let's get him to go the other way, and I'm looking for that leg to turn, yes, or to step to the side, rather. Get him to go the other way, just by holding the food, yes. And you see, he has to change his position if he wants to get to the food in an easier way than trying to really work for it. So you see how I cup it in my hand by turning, he has to turn his head, which will naturally get that back end to pivot. Hey, I'm up here. Let's do one more, get it to pivot. Yes, there we go. So you can see, very simple, very fun training. And during this step, remember, you're not worried about saying the command. Present the physical cue that can get your dog or your puppy to do the behavior every single time without fail. Once you have it at that point, then you can move on to the next step, which is placing the behavior on a command. And a command can be physical or verbal as long as it precedes the physical cue, because then it becomes a predictable pattern and our dog's able to learn. So if you're training a new puppy or if you're following along, you have an older dog, start with this. Get your dog, get your puppy to do all the behaviors that you like by using that technique of luring. You're going to start with continual reinforcement. You're rewarding every single behavior. But once your dog starts to do the behaviors on the command alone, that'll give you an opportunity to start spacing out your rewards so you don't have to give a treat for every little behavior. But we like to start that way. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Let me know what you think about the comments below and take your time with it. Be patient, have fun. Remember, dog training is supposed to be fun. All right. Thanks again, guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Also, uh, leave a comment on how cute this puppy is. Okay, guys.